For your next installment, we'll uh, just run through an example of running known fate models in Mark, and we're going to use the 2007 nest success data that were collected by the class. So, as usual, we go to File and New, and we are going to go to Known Fates, um, and we'll just call this 2007 nest data. And we open it up, and there it is, 2007 nest, say open. So say we didn't really know exactly what they were doing here. We wanted to uh, check and see what it says. Well, these guys, they had uh, two groups. There was riparian and grassland, where they put the nests. Uh, riparian are the one zero, so they're the first 20 here. And then grassland are the zero ones, so they're the second 20. Okay. Um, and to know how many intervals we have, we can just count here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So they put the nest out, and then they went and checked them six times. So we set our intervals to six. Attributes to coo, and first one is riparian. And the second group is grassland. You can see they're using some of the same comparisons we used this semester. OK, so we got that set up. We hit OK. It's going to set up our files. And it brings us right to our parameter index matrix. Let's look at both of those matrices. We'll put them side by side. And the nice thing about known fate models is they're really simple, right? We only have one parameter, that is survival. We do not have to worry about recapture probability because we know with certainty uh, what that nest was at the start of the interval and at the end of the interval, okay? So what we have here on the right is these are the numbered parameters for the riparian nests. So 1 through 6 refers to survival estimates for periods 1 through 6. And then 7 through 12 are the corresponding survival probabilities for the grassland nests uh, for periods 1 through 6. Okay, So we can look at this as a PIM chart like we are used to. And again, notice that on the y-axis here you have S. In both cases, that's the only parameter. And then we have the six values of S for each interval in the riparian and the six values in the grassland. So we can just go ahead and run this model. And we will use big S because we're looking at true survival. And we can just say habitat and time. Okay, so that means. We're looking at each habitat, and we're allowing survival to vary each time period. We run that, say yes and yes, and lo and behold, um, we get our estimates of survival by habitat and time, 12 parameters. And notice here we, we don't have any reduction in the number of parameters like we did with the CJS when we have confounding um, P and phi at the end, because again, known fate, we know exactly um, whether those each one of those nests survived. We don't have any reciting probabilities, so uh, we should be good to go. Let's just take a look at these parameters. So it looks like you're getting some variation in survival among the riparian nests. Remember, those would be um, one through six, those would correspond to the six days that they went out and checked them. And then interesting here for grasslands, um, they had 100% survival of all their nests. Very different from what we had this year. So let's just uh, quickly go over some other ways you could model things. So let's just say, well, I think that maybe there's just daily variation in survival. Uh, so rather than separating riparian and grassland. We'll just slide the grassland on top of the riparian. So now we're coming up with one estimate of survival for each day, uh, regardless of um, 
which habitat it was in. So I'll run the current model, and this would just be S by T. Okay, so we're just allowing survival to vary each day. Hit OK to run. Yes, yes. Close this, and boom, that jumps up to the top. Okay. Hey, there's one thing uh, I told you I'd do, and I forgot at the start here, and that is how to keep it from asking you annoyingly each time if you want to um, use the identity matrix. If no design matrix specified, you just click on File and then Preferences. I'll do that again because that was kind of quick. File, Preferences, and then turn off warning using identity matrix if no matrix is chosen. Um, I think that's all we need to do. Now let's uh, take a look again and we'll select that model and open up our pin chart. Well let's just uh, say maybe we just think there's a difference in survival between grassland and riparian. So I just made the uh, riparian all constant and the grassland all constant. So we just have two parameters now. Again, if you kind of missed that because I went quick, I clicked on the rectangle, right clicked, and then hit constant and did the same thing for the riparian. That gives us one parameter for riparian. All the days are the same. A different survival parameter for grassland. All the days are the same, so we run that, and we call this S by Habitat, and run it. Didn't ask us if we want to use the identity matrix, and boom, that one heads right up to the top, uh, a lot by a lot. Okay, we got 10 um, AIC units, 99% weight. It's saying that that is really um, most likely among this group of models to be the top model. And when we look at it, we see, hmm. So riparian, uh, we've got some variation in survival, 92% um, per day on average. Whereas grassland, it's all the same. There's, there's no predation. So really there's no reason to um, kind of tease out any of those um, other models by looking at variation in grassland uh, survival. So let's do one other thing. Let's uh, start with this model here. And let's say we know that on days 2, 4, and 6, it was nice and warm out. And on days 1, 3, and 5, it was cold and snowy. So we think that um, maybe the predators were affected by that. Maybe they didn't, were out and about on 2, 4, and 6 and not so much on 1, 3, and 5. Um, and we know that there's just no variation in the grassland. So let's just make that constant um, and keep it <clears throat> as one estimate. But now we want to do this uh, 2, 4, 6, 1, 3, 5. So, like I said before, with the CJS, if you want to move individual blocks um, within a rectangle, you hold down the control key, click on that block, pick it up, and move it over to the left. So I moved one, uh, three on top of one. Now I'm going to use move five on top of one. So now we have one estimate of survival to, for days one, three, and five. And we do the same thing for two days two, four, and six. Just drag them over, put them on the top. We've got this gap here. We don't want that. So we say renumber with overlap. So this looks like what we want, right? We got one, uh, just two estimates of survival for the riparian um, and one estimate of survival for the grassland. But like I've said before, we often want to check and make sure that that um, is correct when we start dragging the uh, boxes like that and putting them on top of each other. So I just went into parameter index matrix, said choose all of the 
matrices and now I'm going to tile them and I just want to make sure okay we wanted days one three and five to all have the same number and days two four and six all have the same number so one 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 two 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 and then we come up with a separate estimate for grassland we know it's going to be one okay so that's what we want um, so we run the current model and we say um, something descriptive like riparian uh, 1, 3,5 versus 2, 4,6 and then um, grassland. And we aren't doing any separating of the parameters for the grassland. We run that, say, so yeah, add it, and bam, it goes up to the top. Okay, so you might say, yeah, I kind of knew what was coming when I looked at the previous estimates. Remember, if we take a look at um, the full model ST um, or T habitat, I might have noticed that, yeah, days one, three, and five, uh, we had some predation, two, four, and six, and the repairing we didn't. Yeah, I was doing a little cheating there. Um, but, uh, of course, this model jumps right to the top, and as we might expect, um, well, that is very strange. Oh, I know what's going on. I haven't pulled this model up yet. Let's retrieve that and then look at the model estimates. So the first one uh, is for riparian, and that's days 1, 3, and 5, about 85% survival. Days 2, 4, and 6, 100% survival. And then for the grassland, that would be parameter 3, 100% survival. So that kind of shows you the... Uh, the basics folks and you're off and running now you can analyze your nest success data have fun